Hey everybody. So I was out today shooting some nesting birds. And while I was doing that, I had some time to think about some different things that I wish that I knew earlier on in my wildlife photography journey. If you're new to wildlife photography, oftentimes we're worried about what kind of gear am I gonna buy? What kind of settings do I need to use? And actually that stuff isn't quite as important as some of the tips that I'm going to share with you here today. So my first tip, and it's probably the most important tip, as wildlife photographers, I believe that we have a responsibility to showcase our subject in the best possible manner. And what I mean by this, I love bears. That's my favorite subject to photograph by far. And bears have had a negative connotation created for them by Hollywood. Hollywood has depicted them as these ferocious creatures that are always out to get people. And that's just not the case at all. So I have some footage of a bear eating acorns. These acorns had fallen over the winter, I believe, and they had been on the ground once the snow thawed. This bear found them and he was there eating them. You can see the footage here. There's absolutely nothing ferocious going on at all. It's just a bear enjoying eating some acorns. Now I have tons of still images from this scene as well. And if I was to go through and pick just an individual frame where the bear's jaw was wide open and it looks like he's growling and being very ferocious, I would be painting a negative picture of this bear and misrepresenting the scene. There was nothing ferocious about this scene at all. So I think that as wildlife photographers, it's important that we step back and we look at the image and think about that single image that we're sharing and how it's depicting our subject. Is it accurately depicting the scene that we witnessed? Is it telling a story that's appropriate for the subject? Is it maybe giving a negative connotation about that subject? So it's important that we consider how that image is going to make the viewer feel about our subjects. It's important that we research our subjects before we even go out. Get to know about them, what they like to eat. If you know what a subject likes to eat, you can find that food and you'll have a better chance of actually being able to locate that critter. Know what times of year they mate, what times of year their young are born, what times of year maybe their colors look best and you're going to be able to produce better images that maybe tell a story and show really great interaction. Another of my favorite subjects is white-tailed deer. And I know that in the fall, that's whenever the bucks are going to be looking at their absolute best. Their antlers are going to look great. Their necks are gonna be nice and thick and full. Their coats are going to be dark. And that's the best time to photograph them. In fact, they're going to care less about me as a photographer because they're more interested in passing on their genes to the next generation. I know that right now, this is the best time to photograph fawns. I'm doing a terrible job of finding them this year. I've been striking out just having no luck, but this is the time of year in the spring, early summer where fawns are going to be out and their colors are going to look good with the light brown and the spots, but I've just been striking out. But I've done my research. I know locations where they might be. I know the food sources and I know the times of year whenever different things are happening with that species. So do some research and you're going to maximize your time in the field and get better results. My next tip is all about patience. And trust me, I'm not a very patient person at all. But I've learned with wildlife photography, it's absolutely essential that you have patience. Sometimes we need to have patience for the animal to show up. Other times we need to have patience for the animal to wake up. Sometimes we need to have patience to wait for the lighting conditions to be exactly right. There was a time that I went out 15 times in a row without making a single image. It required a whole lot of patience to continue to go out and look for a subject to photograph. And eventually the tides turned. If you're willing to have patience and allow your subject to just act normally, where you're not pressuring the subject, you're not trying to create something out of nothing, you're going to capture images that are going to be much more powerful than if you were to encroach on your subject. Whenever we get impatient and we start to try to create something, oftentimes we pressure the subject and we cause them to change their behavior and the images 
aren't going to be nearly as good. In fact, whenever you do that, we end up with a lot of butt shots as the subject is running away or flying away. While we're talking about not disturbing wildlife, it's a good time to mention that virtually all wildlife photographers crop their images to some extent. And that's a great tip for you to know, so you won't feel like you need to get super, super close to your subjects. Again, oftentimes whenever you do that, they're just going to run away. It also doesn't keep them safe or you safe, especially depending on what that subject is. It's important that we respect wildlife and give them space to act like the critters that they are. And we're going to again capture more natural behavior. But understand that it's completely okay that if you do stay back and your raw images are just a little bit further away than you would like, it's 100% okay to use digital software to crop your images in virtually all wildlife photography professionals do the same. Practice, practice, practice. The best athletes in the world practice every day to become the best that they can be at their craft. And you should be no different as a beginning wildlife photographer. Go into your backyard and practice shooting images of your dog or set up a bird feeder and shoot images of backyard birds. Go to a local park and take pictures of groundhogs or bunnies or birds there. Get to know the back of your camera and be able to adjust settings without even looking at it. Travel is super expensive. It costs a lot to even get to the grocery store and overspend on your weekly food bill. Get to know the back of your camera and understand your equipment closer to home. That way, whenever you spend a lot of money to travel to a national park or some other location to photograph a species and have an opportunity that you may only have once in a lifetime, you'll come away with better results and you won't feel like it was money wasted. Learn to appreciate local wildlife. It's taken me a long time to learn this lesson and hopefully it doesn't take you quite as long. I mentioned practicing on local wildlife, but appreciate it too. Even if it's a subject that is so common to you, it may not be so common to someone else. Photographing things that are close to home allows you to see that species in different light, figuratively and literally. You can photograph them in rain and poor weather. You can photograph it in different seasons and really tell the story of that species. I have found so much enjoyment in photographing local wildlife. I don't get so frustrated if I miss the shot. I didn't spend a ton of money to get to the location and I don't have a limited time to try to make an image. So learn to appreciate local wildlife. Early on in my wildlife photography journey, I would be out waiting for a situation to unfold only to find out that either the memory card wasn't in the camera or maybe it was full or my battery that I carried with me was nearly dead and I would miss the action that I'd been waiting for as it unfolded in front of me. No more. I won't do that anymore. So my tip for you is make sure that you always carry extra batteries and memory cards. I like to wear hiking cargo pants whenever I go out to photograph wildlife. It allows me to have extra pockets where I can store memory cards and batteries, my lens cap. I also have allergies, so sometimes I need to carry Kleenexes with me depending on the time of year. These hiking cargo pants allow me to have a separate pocket for my Kleenex so that I'm not getting the fibers from the Kleenex all over my accessories that I'm keeping in my other pockets. So make sure you always have extra batteries and memory cards and I highly recommend hiking cargo pants that will dry really quickly whenever you're kneeling down in some wet conditions. You know, it can feel really good whenever you capture an image that you're proud of and you're excited to post it on social media and you get positive feedback and you share it with friends and family and tell them the story about how you captured it and they shower you with praises. But it's important, especially as a beginning wildlife photographer, that you find somebody that's been doing this for a little while, someone that might have a little bit of technical knowledge 
and ask them to critically evaluate your image. Not that they're going to rip it apart, but provide positive feedback that's going to help you to grow as a photographer. We can all do better. I learn something new every time I go out. I learn something new every time I talk to another wildlife photographer. So as a beginning wildlife photographer, it's really important that you search out somebody that's been doing this a little bit longer and get honest feedback. It's a fantastic experience whenever an animal gives you that glimpse into their world. We're able to capture the beauty that God has created. Feel free to reach out to me and ask any questions that you might have in the comments down below. If you're a seasoned wildlife photographer and you have a tip that's not connected to technicalities and equipment, feel free to leave those tips down below as well. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.